Are you sick of telling the computer what to do and wish it would just start thinking for itself? Yeah, me too. Hi, this is Tom Does Tech. I'm Tom, and in this video, we're going to have a look at GitHub Copilot, and I'm going to try to satisfy your curiosity by answering questions like, will Copilot help me write better code? Will it help me learn new languages? And is it going to steal my job? So if you haven't heard about GitHub Copilot yet, it is a new product from GitHub powered by OpenAI. And it is supposed to be your AI pair programmer, meaning that it will give you code suggestions when you're writing out your code. So you can see here that it supports multiple languages. We have Go, TypeScript, Python, and Ruby. And if you haven't yet, you can sign up for a technical preview. I signed up yesterday and I had access this morning. So you should get access pretty quickly. And it's a VS Code extension. So you can just install the extension and you're good to start going. So I'm going to give you a preview now of what it's like. So I have this index file here and we can just start creating some functions in here. So there's two ways that you can create some code. So you can say function is palindrome and you can give it some input, which is going to be a string. And then you can just wait for the suggestion down here. You saw it flash up, but I was too slow and it went away. So we can try prompt it again. Uh, here we go. So return string, string.split or reverse.join. Okay, so you press tab to autocomplete this, or you can open up Copilot. And you can see here it's synthesizing 10 solutions for you. And it takes a while because it must have to query the model for all the solutions. So I have my 10 solutions here. So you can see that they're all slightly different. Sometimes all the solutions are the same, but in this case, they're all slightly different. Okay, so let's just choose the first one. Click accept. And it does some funny things with brackets, which is a sort of minor complaint. And we can close those brackets. And now we can export this function. So, and we can see if it gives us some code hints here. We can, and you can see it's telling us that we can export uh, is palindrome but let's export it as an object and see if it helps us with that. Okay, sort of a weird suggestion here. And then let's create a test for this function. So we can create a describe block and I'm going to open up my describe. And for some reason, I think that's a VS Code import. And let's see what hints it gives us. You can see for things like this, the speed of it makes it not very usable for things. The speed makes it not very usable for small things. So this is probably better to have um, IntelliSense or something do this one for you. And we can see what it suggests for us for the test. Okay, so the, this is quite a comprehensive test that it's suggesting here for us. It's funny because I did this before and it only gave me one suggestion for this. And now with the exact same function, it's given me a completely different suggestion. So this is the suggestion it gave me before, race car. Okay, so you can see it's giving us 10 solutions here. And I think this solution here is quite good. It gives us three tests. This one should return true for race car, it should return false for race car with an E on the end. And here it should return false for non-string inputs. So that's quite a good test. Let's accept that answer. And again, it's done some funny things with the brackets. I think we just need to remove that there. And I have jest set up in the package.json. So let's run this test. And the test has failed. And the only part that failed is my require statement that I wrote myself. So it turns out the AI is better at programming than me already. Okay, so should return false if it's a non-string input, but I don't think it's testing if it's a string input. So we can fix this. So if is not equal to string. Okay, so that's quite a good suggestion that it's giving us there. Then we just want to return false. Let's run our test again. Okay, so this is quite a simple function but then a quite comprehensive test set to go with it, all written in a few seconds. I think if you got used to how Copilot worked, this would have been quite quick. So let's try again with another function. The other way that you can create code is to write a comment. So I don't think you need to specify the language 
although it's telling me here that I do. So I'm going to create a function, a function to see if a binary tree is balanced. So you can see that it's suggesting the first line here. So we're going to open Copilot again, and it's going to look for 10 solutions for us. Is balance. I don't know how to do this off the top of my head, so I'm just going to accept that solution. Okay, so this, this is complete function. Function of a binary tree is complete. Okay, so we didn't answer, we didn't ask for that. We didn't ask for any of these. Okay, so let's export this function again and see what tests it gives us. Okay, so let's just accept this test here and let's run this test. And it fails. Received one, expected to be false. So can this help me write better code? Maybe, maybe it can help you write better code, but you need to know how to program for it to write better code for you. So I don't really think that it's going to help you write better code. Could it help you learn a new language? Well, let's find out. So I have this Go script here and I am not a Go programmer. I have very minimal experience with Go. Um, I'm going to type Go mod in at main and I'm going to tell Go to create a REST API with MUX. Okay, let's just do that. And we can open Copilot to see all the solutions. Okay, so it's going to use MUX here. Let's create a new router, v1 hello. Okay, that actually looks all right. Let's go get this MUX module. So type go get github.com slash gorilla slash MUX. And I'm gonna type go run main.go. Let's curl local host and then port 8080. 404 page not found. Okay, so it's returning something slash API slash v1 slash hello. Okay, cool. That's a REST API with Go. Let's see what else it can do with Go. Let's try something a little bit more sophisticated. Create a REST API with CRUD operations for a user model. Okay, so it's creating a user struct for us with ID, name, email, and created at all reasonable inputs for a user. Get user by ID, get user by email, get user by name, create user by email and name, but that's the end of the solution. It doesn't look like a complete solution there for that one. And either does this one here. Okay, this, it looked promising at the top here, but it doesn't look like it's a complete solution either. Okay, so let's accept this solution. And you can see down here, it just cuts off all of a sudden. So let's see what it suggests that we do next. Okay, we'll do that, do that, create all these handlers. So I'm curious as to why these weren't in the suggestion. Maybe there's a character limit for the suggestion length. All of this is a fair bit of code for an autocomplete tool to suggest for you, which is quite impressive. Okay, we're creating a lot of endpoints here. Do we have all these handlers? Server.user. No, we don't have these handlers. I'm not sure why it wants us to create all of this. So I think for more complicated stuff like this, it can help you write the code if you already know what you're doing. But if you don't really know the language that well, it's not really going to help you that much. So let's move on. Is GitHub Copilot going to steal my job? Probably not. Probably not right now anyway. It might do in the future. It might reduce the need for the number of developers. But the truth is that I don't know and nobody knows. And it's all speculation for now. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, please subscribe and like the video. I'll see you next time.